All right. Hey, this is Erica Chikowski with DevOps.com, and I'm on location at Does 2015. I'm talking with Dominic Ferrone. He's a software engineer with CenturyLink. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, continuous integration, continuous delivery in legacy environments. Yep. It's a tough topic. It's one that a lot of people are trying to, to really muddle through. Mm -hmm. One thing that I, I wanted to ask you about is, what do you think about this whole idea of bimodal IT going at two speeds? So, you know, in a legacy environment, that's really, uh, it's, it's a reality yeah. of the environment. You have systems and, uh, you know, application suites that have been around for years, if not decades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to get them to go at the rate of change of some of the, you know, modern technologies allow you to do, you, it's going to take a lot of work, and uh, if not, uh, it's <laughs> going to be bimodal IT. Right. Uh, so, so you you know you plan for it. You address the issues that you can get at. Right. That budget and time allows you to get to, and uh, you move as much of your uh, platform into you know 21st century. Yeah. You you get those results, or you you reach for those results that you can do with the modern tools right. and the other uh you know your your legacy stuff you're gonna have to do some management around that you can you know play some tricks and get some gains out of right. it you know uh, new ideas and new methodologies you can port them you, they're flexible enough uh so you can get some gains but they're you know that old uh, 1960s Mustang is not going to run <laughs> right. like your brand new Tesla. Right. So that's where you end up with bimodal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a transition. If if uh, you know DevOps is an iterative process, then hey, that, that's part of, of iterating. Um, you mentioned tricks. Mm -hmm. What would you say are maybe two of your favorite tricks or two two things that people can really home in on to to help things as they transition? Well, I would say you know just the taking your legacy delivery model, you know, whether that's the old waterfall and move mm -hmm. into agile and getting your, <clears throat> getting your, you know, who's doing the builds, where the developers uh, kind of, you know, responsibility goes to, where that handoff occurs, right. who owns what. Um, some of those tricks are, you know, instead of it being, you know, this team does their work right. and then it just sits there waiting for somebody else to pick it up. You know, you can use the automation right. to take the people out of those steps and really gain, uh, gain that time back. Right. So you're decreasing that uh, feedback loop, the time it takes to find out, is my job really done? And can I start working on the right. new cool thing? Definitely. Yeah. And it sounds like, I mean, feedback loops, kind of contracting those feed feedback loops is really the key thing that you want to, to bring across to people when it comes yeah. to legacy systems and DevOps, yeah, is that right? Yes, it, we've, some of our legacy systems, I mean the feedback time in the past had been four to six weeks. Whoa, okay. And, and you know, for some of the older apps, that's just the way it was, yeah, you right. know? You hand it off to this other team and you may or may not hear back yep. until they get done whatever they're on. So automating that so that it just happens as soon as the team right. finishes, puts their, you know, I think I'm done on it. Right. The next thing picks up and starts right from that point. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Dominic, thanks so much. Yeah. I hope you enjoy the rest of your show. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thanks so much.